In today's video, I take some two by fours, some down tree limbs, and turn them into a pretty awesome bed for my son. I also have a few visitors stop by the shop. Stay tuned. What's going on guys? So my son said he wanted quote unquote, a cool big boy bed. Now the cool part is coming, but first we had to get started on the main frame of the bed. I drew up a quick sketch just to give me an idea on the amount of lumber I would need to get. So the main frame is going to be made out of a total of four two by fours, four two by sixes, and one four by four. And that's it. I started out cutting the two by sixes. These were going to be the main rails of the bed. We are making them a full size bed. So the rails were cut to 74 inches for the length and the widths were 54 inches. After you get them cut, try not to drill your miter saw with the pieces you cut. So out of the four two by fours, I cut the widths, the same two of them at 53 inches. And then the lengths I cut one to 75 inches but the other one I had to cut 24 inches shy of that. This was gonna be where the opening is for my son to get in and out of the bed. And that made that 50 inches in length. Also, make sure you save your cutoff pieces because we will be using them. Lastly, the four x four. This was cut for, you guessed it, the legs. The legs I cut to 23 and a half inches. This was so I could maximize the use of my eight foot four by four. I didn't make them exactly 24 inches because each time you cut it, it takes an eighth inch off and my last leg would have been short. Now, when you're using framing lumber, I always square up the pieces. Uh, the factory rounded edge on it, it just screams construction lumber. So I always mill it smaller and take off that rounded edge. This makes it look a little sleeker. So I took a quarter inch off both sides of the two by material, making the two by six now five inches in width, and then the two by fours now three inches in width. The four by fours, I took a half inch off of two of the faces, making them three inches by three inches. And then you're left with a lifetime supply of paint stirring sticks. Next, you're going to want to take all of your cutoffs. These are going to be made into the spindles that go upright in between the pieces we just cut. These I squared up and I made a bunch of inch and a half by inch and a half lengths. Then it was onto the crosscut sled where I cut all those lengths to 13 inches. Now I have a habit of just wanting to get things built and then sanding it as it's built. But for this project, I figured it would make a lot more sense to sand the pieces now before assembling. Because sanding in between all those spindles once it's together would not be fun. And let's be honest, sanding isn't fun anyway, so why make it less fun? I don't even know if that made any sense. But I'll tell you what does make sense, and that's using these little rug things underneath your work while you're sanding. I'm not even sure what they're exactly called, but it's the rubber thing you put beneath your rugs to stop it from slipping around. I think it's like a rug gripper or something. But I saw a picture of someone doing it a while back and thought, that is genius. I've also switched over to the 3M Extract Sandpaper, which has made sanding a lot more enjoyable as well. So after sanding until it felt like my arm was going to fall off, I needed to find a way to discreetly connect the spindles to the cross pieces. The easiest way for me to do that was with loose mortise and tenon with my domino. But dowels would work great here as well if you don't have a domino. With the spindles all prepped, I needed to figure out even spacing for them. Being the mathematician that I am, this was going to be easy, right? No, but it actually was pretty easy. All I did was Google even spindle spacing and found a calculator that made it super easy to plug in the dimensions and give me the exact spacing I needed. With that spacing, I marked them all down on my rails and cross pieces, marking where I needed to mortise out the opposing mortises to allow for the spindles. And then this is where my visitors came and stopped in. Visitors. Literally think they're just eating like pieces of wood. Things eat anything. Once all the mortises were all set, it was on to gluing them up. These were not the easiest to glue up. I had to glue them all up at once, uh, and getting all the spindles to line up was just a little bit of a challenge, but we got through it. 
After those were dry, the 3x3 three three beds needed to be permanently connected to the two end sections of the bed. To do this, I mocked it up and marked out where to put my mortises, and then down at the bottom, I used pocket holes. The tops were going to be seen, so that's why I used the dominoes. The bottom was going to be completely hidden by the mattress, so I made it easy and just used pocket holes. With all that together, I could then lay it out. The rail pieces were going to be connected with these brackets so the bed can be disassembled and broken down if you ever got to move it and whatnot. I've used these brackets on a number of different beds I've built. They're cheap, they're easy to install, they're super strong once they're together. Just make sure you buy good screws because they don't come with any screws. I'll link the brackets and the screws I used below. But to install them, I just put the male part of the bracket on the rail and make sure it's flush with the outside and mark the holes. And then just pre-drill and screw them in place, all four of them, on the end of all of your bottom rails. Then to install the female part of the bracket, I mock the brackets together, and then I set the rail where I want it, and mark the top hole on the female bracket where I want it to go. I can then transfer where that hole is marked on all four of the legs, mark them out, and install them. Now I could put the whole base together and to connect the top rails of the bed, I used bolts and threaded inserts. I basically pre-drilled and screwed them together temporarily with a four inch deck screw. This would mark exactly where I needed to install my threaded insert into the top rail. I used the screw because I didn't have a long enough drill bit to go through the lag into the top rail, but I did have a long enough screw, so that's why I used that. I used some CA glue on the inserts, screwed them in, and could install it all together. These also would have wood plugs in the end to make it look better. Once it was together at this point, I could show my son Cam what I was working on. That's the bird's nest. But it broke. Yeah, it broke. I don't even know where that came from. Maybe a bird left it here. <laughs> Maybe. Dude, did you see what was in the garage? I didn't. You gotta go look. I gotta go look. You gotta go look. Look at that, dude. What is that? Can I get in it? Yeah. Where's the mattress? Where's the mattress? Can we go to the room? I'll be right back. I ripped a 2x4 down to a couple narrow pieces and glued and screwed them on the inside of the bed rails. This was going to be where my slats set to hold the mattress. Uh, this part's completely optional. I just wanted the mattress up off the floor. But you could easily drop your bottom rails down and make them even with the feet. And then all you got to do is just put your mattress so it sets right on the floor. Now it was finally time for the creative and more fun part of the build. So I take the chainsaw and I was going to find some limbs for the teepee part. A while back I cut down some dead ash trees on our property and thought I could find what I was looking for there. I had the rough dimensions what I needed and cut a bunch of pieces I could then bring it back up to the garage and play around with. Well, the bark ended up being way too hard to get off of that, so I did go out back and find some more where the bark came off with ease. To get the angle I needed, I clamped a level onto the bed, placed the tree limb where I wanted it to go, and then I marked the tree limb along the level. So this would give me the angle I needed to cut it at. I did that with all four corners, being sure to label where each limb went. Then after that, I connected all the limbs with dowels. I wasn't ever going to use glue or anything. It was just going to be a slip fit so they could come together and come apart. But to do this, I screwed a drill guide right to the bottom of each limb, drilled a half inch hole for a half inch dowel, and then I used one of the metal dowel point marker things, put it into the limb, and then put the limb where I wanted it to go on the bed and push down, creating a little divot where I could then drill for the dowel. I then did one more final sanding and also sanded the tree limbs I got just to smooth them off and take off any rough edges. I finished the tree limbs with a do-it-yourself Danish oil I mix up. It's just equal parts of boiled linseed oil, oil-based polyurethane, and 100% mineral spirits. For the base of the bed, I tinted that same Danish oil with early American stain, just so there wasn't such a sharp change in color from the teepee part to the natural pine base. After a couple coats of that, and everything was dry, I could finally take it up to my son's room and start putting it together. I tied up the teepee part with just some twine 
just to give it a little more character. But in the end, I did screw these sticks together just to make it more secure. I put up some lights that I got on Amazon just to dress it up a bit. Ignore that center support piece that you see in any of these frames. I actually ended up not even using that. And then I put the slats across that I milled up from an ash tree. And I finally got it set up just in time for the kids to come home and show them. And then as you can see on the upright teepee part, I did leave like a few kind of branches coming off. I just figured that'd be a cool place where he could like hang a hoodie or he could hang like a hat or something. Yeah, it's got an opening right here. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, I got another one queued up for you right here. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more. I got a ton of new videos coming.